Now, Press TV's American a journalist of Lebanese descent, Serena Shem, has been killed in a car accident in Turkey. She was reporting from the Turkish-Syrian border near Kobani and was returning after doing a report on Kobani when her a car collided with a truck. The identity and the whereabouts of the truck driver remains a mystery. We have more details in this report. Press TV's correspondent Serena Shem has been killed in southern Turkey near the Syrian border. Serena was killed in a car accident when she was returning from a report scene in the city of Suraj in Turkey's Urfa province. She was going back to a hotel in Urfa when a car collided with a heavy vehicle. On Friday, Serena told Press TV that a Turkish intelligence agency has threatened and accused her of spying and she feared she may be arrested. I'm very surprised at this accusation. I've even thought of actually approaching Turkish intelligence and because I have nothing to hide and I've never done anything aside from my job and I'd like to make that apparent to them. However, I am a bit worried because as you know and as, as the viewers know, that Turkey has been labeled by Reporters Without Borders as the largest prison for journalists. So I am a bit frightened about what they might use against me. Uh, we were some of the first people on the ground, if not the first people to to get that story of those Takfiri militants going in through the Turkish border from the Bebel Hawa Rihanli border being sent in. Uh, I got images of them in the, in World Food Organization trucks. It was very apparent that they were Takfiri militants by their beards and by the clothes that they wore. And they were going in there with NGO trucks. And, and I just find it very odd. They went to several local residents here asked about me. The residents said, no, we know her. We have seen her before. We've seen her work. She's not a spy. And they were they were blatant on going through with the fact that, no, yes, I actually am. And that they, they told any people that if they see me to bring me in. Serena was reporting from the Turkish border near Kobani. She said the accusations might be due to her coverage of Turkey's stance on ISIL's atrocities in Kobani and the recent protests in Turkey. Kurdish fighters have appealed to fellow Kurds in Iraq to send reinforcements as Turkey refuses to allow Kurds to cross the border and join them in defending the city. Eyewitness reports say the ISIL terrorists keep beheading, raping and torturing civilians. This man who just came from Kobani has witnessed the accounts firsthand. They believe if they push a carrot, they will go to heaven. This is all because of Turkey. Kurds here have made several attempts to try and take in humanitarian aid to the besieged city of Kobani. But the Turkish army is lined up across the border, not letting anyone in. They also warn to shoot any people who attempt to go further. Serena Shim covered reports for Press TV in Lebanon, Iraq, Ukraine and during Turkey's Gezi Park protests in 2013. She was married and had two children. Well, joining us now from studios in Tehran is Press TV's newsroom director, Hamid Reza Imadi. Mr. Imadi, you have worked with Serena over the years. What are your initial reactions? It was a sad day for Press TV for... Uh, the international community, for journalists, for everyone who wants to get the truth out of the situation that is going on uh, in this part of the world. Just put two and two together, Fatima. Uh, you can see uh, Serena uh, being live on press TV talking about how she was accused of spying for the uh, um, anti-Ankara opposition uh, beca just because she told, told uh, the world about how Ankara collaborated with those terrorists, how Ankara helped those terrorists in Syria and in Iraq, how Ankara blocked those Kurdish uh, fighters from going inside uh, Kobani and help those uh, Kurdish fighters against ISIL militants. Um, Serena told the story, so when, when, when Serena tells the story, and once Serena gets accused of spying, then uh, Serena gets threatened by intelligence agents. And then after just two days, she gets killed in a car accident. This is 21st century. Nobody buys that kind of childish, infantile argument on the part of Turkey that the correspondent who has criticized Turkey for such a long time has died in a car accident.
we're not going to buy that. And nobody in his or her sound mind would buy that argument. We believe that the Turkish government has to be held responsible, has to be held accountable before the international community. It has to find out exactly what happened. And uh, on top of that, uh, Serena was an American national of uh, Lebanese origins. She, as an American, was killed inside Turkey in a very suspicious incident under very suspicious circumstances. We are waiting to see whether the U.S. government is reacting, whether the U.S. government is asking Ankara uh, for clarification on the, the suspicious death of an American national who uh, worked for Press TV. Serena Shim had two kids, uh, very young kids. Uh, they are um, now in Lebanon. Mom will never go back to Lebanon to, to see her kids just because mom criticized a certain country that is creating chaos in the region by supporting terrorists both inside Syria and inside Iraq. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Press TV reserves the right, every right to pursue the matter legally. We are not going to let go. We are going to continue our efforts just like what we did with Maya Nasser, although it didn't get anywhere because there was no strong determination on the part of the Western world, on the part of those so-called Amnesty International Human Rights Watch. I contacted them personally when two years ago our correspondent Maya Nasser got killed in Syria. He was shot in the neck and in the chest by a sniper. I personally pursued the matter. I talked to those human rights organizations. They refused to condemn the killing of a journalist. And I'm sure, again, they will con uh, refuse to condemn the killing of another press TV journalist just because they reported the truth. They didn't report what the United States and what the Western media wanted them to report. They reported what the reality on the ground was. So we will have to wait and see how the United States government will react to the killing of its citizen who appeared to be working for Press TV, how the Iranian government will pursue the matter because Serena Shin was working for an Iranian TV channel. And uh, we at Press TV, we will definitely try to let people know about the situation as far as the killing of the suspicious death of Serena Shim is concerned. Of course, and Mr. Mahdi, as you just mentioned, uh, Serena has two small children. Uh, joining us is our correspondent Ali Resk from Beirut to tell us a bit more about the reactions coming from Serena's family, uh, the people she left behind. Uh, Ali, what's the, what's it like at your end? Well, we uh, sat down with the family for just about uh, almost an hour. We left about 10 minutes ago. The family, uh, very similar to what we just heard uh, from Mr. Ahmadi, one answers. That's the best uh, way I can put it. One, one answers. They believe that what uh, took place doesn't really add up. And they do believe that in one way or another, this uh, supposed car accident is not really an actual car accident, but that something uh, fit took place. So that's the uh, that's the same uh, the same things we heard from Mr. Hamadi. The family also, in addition to its grievances, of course, is uh, once these answers, uh, Serena's sister will be heading to uh, Turkey within hours at four o'clock uh, dawn in the morning, the Beirut time, which is in about um, possibly five or uh, five hours from now. And uh, therefore, you know, they are, they are going to pursue or they are going to begin to pursue this issue uh, right at the very beginning. You know, Serena's sister going there and is going to open up a case trying to find out uh, what took place. Uh, and so therefore, you know, that, that is the current situation which we have. These, uh, the family also, just like Press TV, wants to know what really happened and aren't buying the story about a car accident being the cause of death. Right now, uh, Ali, you worked with Serena. She worked for our Beirut desk. Uh, just take off your journalist cap for a minute. Uh, tell us what you're feeling right now when you heard uh, of Serena's tragic death. Well, uh, first of all, uh, it's uh, still hard to believe right now when you know someone and, uh, and this sudden uh, news comes out. 
Of course, it's Soros Serena, someone who was also, in addition to uh, a colleague at work, was a friend. Uh, it's uh, a feeling which, which you know, any any journalist, I think, would feel sorry. Any human being would also feel sorry for this. What particularly, you know, uh, made me, uh, what particularly touched me was when I was sitting down, looking at the photographs and looking at the very young children that she had. You know, one boy, uh, one girl. Uh, very young of age, as uh, as we heard from Mr. Ahmadi, that is something which really, you know, uh, me as a father of uh, two girls, that's uh, something which really causes me pain. And really, I, I don't know how how even her father could have put up with this situation. Her father, by the way, is someone who's, who is very attached to his daughter. Uh, he was known to have a very close relationship with her. I personally saw them together on more than one occasion. And so, indeed, it's natural that one would feel so for such a friend, for such a mother as well, up to two children. But uh, I think that, you know, in the end, one must also feel pride that uh, we continue to see these people who are uh, buying or risking their lives for the sake of uncovering the truth of what's taking place. Indeed, that was oppressive, Ali. That's the reporting from Beirut. Uh, let me also bring in political analyst Ibrahim Musawi into the, the conversation. He's joining us from studios in Beirut. Uh, Mr. Musawi, you heard our newsroom director, Mr. Hamid Reza Ahmadi, speak of how the Turkish government must be held responsible for what happened. The details of Serena's death, uh, the suspicious circumstances surrounding it are still pouring in. They're just trickling in, if I might add. Um, what do you make of it? Well, up till now and before I start, let me offer my deep condolences for uh, the family of Press TV, for all the journalists. Serena Sham was a colleague. I know her personally. She interviewed me more than scores of times, actually. And uh, this is a very tragic loss at this moment. This is a very sad moment for her direct family, for her children, two children, and for the Press TV, for all the journalists, for all... Uh, who are trying to seek the truth at this very sad moment in the whole region. So first of all, let me offer my deep condolences and to say that I'm personally shocked when I heard the news. It was like a conversation taking place, a conversation taking place between two people when they called me actually and they were still talking to each other and I got the news. So it was a real shock to me and I wanted just to investigate what happened. I went to the social media and I read all the... Uh, all the comments that have been uh, written by her colleagues, by everybody who knew her. Everybody is casting suspicions and casting a lot of uh, skepticism about the way she died. We know very well now, it is the truth, it's there in the wire, it's everywhere that uh, she's been accused uh, by the Turkish authorities uh, that she is spying for the Turkish uh, opposition. Uh, she, she was harassed, she was whatever, and now after that she has been killed and they say her car slammed into a heavy vehicle. I mean, this is very suspicious and it would take a fool to believe this, but yet we don't want to jump into conclusions. And without jumping into conclusions, because the whole event has happened on the Turkish soil, so the Turkish authorities should be held responsible to give a very, a very detailed, transparent investigation first and to give a very detailed, transparent, frank and direct account for what happened. Here you're talking about a life that has been spent. This is a very young uh, woman that has passed away because of her work in order to cover the truth. This is a moment, a very important moment for all those who are fully conscious about the kind of mission that she was carrying. She was trying as much as she can to make alleviation of the suffering of the people uh, wherever she goes. Because we know, first of all, we have to know what's happening before we can act. So this is something very sad. This is something very tragic. But at the very, uh, at the very time, we have to tell those authorities that they have to do everything possible in order to come out with a very transparent investigation, with a very uh, transparent case that they could give to the family, to the press TV, to all the journalists. And at the same time, we should press forward for other uh, in NGOs in order to have their own independent investigation as well. 
This is an opportunity for the Turkish authorities as well, that if there is an independent investigation that is being carried out by uh, independent uh, bodies like NGOs, like Amnesty International, like any, any uh, journalist body or media body, then this is going to add credibility to, to any report that might come out, that might be released. And here I want to take the opportunity to talk about Maya Nasser, that uh, Mr. Imadi talked about, I mean, uh, he was assassinated, he was uh, killed by a sniper also two years ago uh, during the uh, crisis in Syria. We haven't heard anything. I mean, why is it that when it comes to the journalists in the Arab world, in the Islamic world, journalists that follow a certain line uh, while, while uh, holding and maintaining their own uh, credibility, why they are being ignored, why the, we don't see any kind of investigation, any kind of condemnation. I mean, do they have a less value of a blood? Do, you have, do they have a less value of a humanity? This is something very important. And I believe what has been brought to the forefront of the discussion by Mr. Imadi uh, is, is very important at this, at this moment. We are all like uh, waiting for the moment to hear. We don't want to jump into premature conclusions or any kind of a judgment, but at the same time, our eyes are full op fully opened, and I believe many, hundreds of thousands, millions are following up the case to see what kind of reaction is going to be done, first of all by the journalists, by the colleague, by the authorities in Turkey, and most importantly, by the whole body, actually. What Indeed, is Mr. Imadi, let me bring it? you in. Mr. Mousawi raises a very going? important uh, question here. Um, after Maya Nasser's uh, tragic uh, death by sniper fire while he was covering the situation uh, in Syria, there was this frustration that the Press TV family felt, including you as well, uh, as you've just mentioned, uh, over the lack of coverage, over the lack of outrage, over the lack of action. Uh, and there is most likely going to be the same scenario being played out when it comes to Serena Shem, even though Press TV is demanding a full, transparent inquiry into it. Uh, as Mr. Musa, we asked, why is it that our journalists are not being given the same importance, the same airtime, the same urgency? Well, per perhaps it's because uh, our journalists are reporting what the, the Western media uh, are not willing to hear. You know, um, Serena Shim was there telling the world about how Turkey was helping those terrorists in Syria and in Iraq. And that's not exactly what the U.S. media want to hear. Serena Shim was there to tell the world that the U.S. airstrikes are not really effective. They're not doing anything to stop the killing of people, Kurdish people in Kobani by the ISIL terrorists. So Serena Shim was telling the world that uh, this whole airstrikes, Turkey thing, is just a theater. You know, it's not real. So uh, when, when she says those things on television, live television, she's brave enough to tell the world about the realities on the ground because she's there and she sees with her uh, eyes exactly what's going on and she reports what she's seeing and she reports what she's feeling. That's not exactly what the Western, Western media want to hear. And that's how they're sending a signal to independent journalists like uh, Serena Shem. They're telling them that if you die just like Maya Nasser died, just like uh, Serena Shem was killed, we're not going to give you airtime. We're not going to cover the story because you're not following the line that we are following. We are the, the line that has been dictated to us by those who are controlling mass media in the world. Just let me give you an example. A year ago, I, I uh, Western... Um, correspondent called me and she was asking me to cover the story of uh, an American journalist who was kidnapped inside Syria by the militants. At that time it was a Nusra terrorists in Syria and uh, she was saying that Mr. Mahdi, our channel, our American uh, channel is not covering the story, is not covering the story of kidnapping our own journalists just because they do not want to portray those uh, militants as dangerous people be just because those militants are fighting the Assad government. So I was asking her, uh, as you know, Iran is not uh, supporting those militants uh, and Iran is supporting the, the Syrian government in the fight against those militants. So why is it that you want me to cover the story? She said, simply because nobody else would cover the story. So I did cover the story. I talked to the parents of that American journalist and they asked on a live television uh, for their son's release. I don't know what happened to their son. Uh, 
but at the end of the day, what I realized was that a lot of those journalists know exactly what the truth is about the war in Syria, about the war in, in Iraq today, and about how Turkey, the United States, Qatar, Saudi Arabia are collaborating with those terrorists as we speak. Those journalists know about it because they can't just close their eyes to the uh, truth of the matter, but they just don't have the stomach to say it because if they say it, they'll be kicked out. I will give you the example of Amber Lyon. She was a famous journalist working for CNN. She was um, literally kicked out because she, uh, she was critical of the, the, the CNN lack of coverage of the situation on the ground in Bahrain just because Bahrain funds CNN. Bahrain is, is paying CNN. So, I mean, uh, independent journalists uh, are being sent a signal by those mainstream media outlets that if you, if you want to be independent, you're on your own. If you die, we're not going to cover the story. If you're alive, we're not going to hire you. Go work with Press TV. Tell the story um, that we don't want to hear. All right, Mr. Mousavi, I'd put the same question to you. What does this mean for independent, transparent journalism uh, when correspondents like Maya Nasser, like Serena Shim, who believe in what Press TV stands for, are killed in cold blood and then are not given uh, the right coverage and the right urgency that their cases require. Well, let me tell you one simple thing: uh, we're not going to be intimidated. We're not going to be. Uh, we're not going to. We're not going to be frightened by such kinds of harassment or by such kinds of, of threats that would happen. I mean, here you're talking about a complete people that is being eliminated or annihilated. You are talking about. Also, I remember here uh, Rachel Curry. We know uh, uh, this this American uh, activist that has been crushed under the Israeli bulldozer in Gaza, in Jenin camp, and the American authorities held her ears deaf about her. She's an American. Uh, she is an American citizen, and uh, they don't care about her because it happened that she is in the wrong side of the history or in the wrong side of the equation against Israel and against uh, the Israeli atrocities against the Palestinians. Uh, a very simple thing that we have to understand. When we want to carry our mission, when we want to continue what, what, what we believe in, we have to pay the price. And I believe all the journalists, Serena Sham, uh, Maya Nasir, uh, there are the other colleagues who work at Press TV or any other uh, TV. I remember even uh, at Manar TV, for example, the three uh, brothers, uh, Hamza al Hash Hassan and Alam, uh, Halim Allaw and uh, Muhammad Mantash, they were also killed recently in uh, Ma'lula area in Syria. So here you're talking about uh, a whole uh, track of journalists that could be killed at any time. They are going to continue the mission, whatever will happen. And just go and watch uh, Serena Sham, see what kind of journalist she was. She's a media woman that is full, full of energy. She is bright. She is uh, intellectual. And more importantly, she works with passion. You, you can see now, as I see the report, what, what she was doing, I mean, trying to uh, spread out the word, trying to bring the truth closer to the minds and the hearts of the people to see what's really going on there. Of course, I mean, when it comes to the authorities, they would, they would fear the word, the truth, because it's not working to their own interest. This Indeed, is a Mr. world Musabi, of interest. I'm going to have to we stop know you the there. United I'm afraid States, we've run the, out of time. Uh, uh, power, Mr. Ahmadi, they... I'll give you 30 seconds. Uh, we here at Press TV, of course, salute every journalist who risks his or her life out there uh, on the front lines to bring the truth. What would you say? Well, I would say that uh, journalists need to be protected by governments and only cowards, coward, cowardish governments, those are the ones who are uh, fighting journalists, who are killing journalists, who are imprisoning journalists. Because this is not something that well, you can't stop a person from telling the story. It's not, it's not possible. Because now we have citizen journalists. If you kill Serena Shem, there will be another Serena Shem who will rise up, who will tell the story. And you can't stop people from telling the story by just killing them like Serena Shem or Maya Nasser were killed.
Indeed, the legacy of uh, Serena Shim and Maya Nasser will live on. That was Press TV's newsroom director, Hamid Reza Mahdi, and also joining us from studios in Beirut was political analyst Ibrahim Musavi. Gentlemen, thank you for your comments here on Press TV. And, of course, our correspondent Ali Risk joined us earlier uh, on this tragic day. We, of course, offer our condolences to Serena's family uh, and uh, the journalism family as a whole as we have lost a very important, a very dedicated journalist today.